my research is related to democratization and the future of democracy, which is actually a, a course that I'll be offering this summer. I do research on protest and coups in particular. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the implications about um, the risk of coups and coup politics in the United States. First, uh, I think the good news is, I think that in the short run, the risk of a coup uh, in the United States has abated with, uh, with the transition to the new Biden administration. W One Earth Future, who puts together uh, a forecast of coup risk around the world, um, estimates that the United States only has a risk of 0.08% of a coup attempt in 2021. So that, that's reassuring, um, at least from the perspective of a classic coup d'etat, which usually 96% um, of the time, according to a data set that I've compiled, uh, involves the military, right? So that is something where over the past year, uh, as the election conflict really ramped up, I think that the risk of a coup obviously did uh, escalate. Um, and, and that's something that now, <clears throat> at least in the short run, will, will abate. One question um, that I wanted to address is, you know, so did the United States actually experience a coup um, over, over the last several months? Uh, or really did it uh, suffer a self coup, right? A, a, an executive led coup by, by President uh, Trump to try to overturn the election. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of um, takes on it and a lot of focus, of course, with uh, the insurrection that occurred on January 6th. But uh, from the perspective of, of a coup scholar, I think that more of the interesting uh, dynamics uh, about the attempt to subvert the election was the fact that so many of the actions that President Trump took um, were quite public, right? Most coup plotters uh, uh, act in secret, right? Uh, if, if they want to try to um, seize power, uh, you know, Trump was tweeting all the time, right? Uh, you know, now he's been banned. Um, and, uh, you know, there were some things that were legal, you know, including all of the court cases, and then other things where the legality, you know, um, Trump administration and or Trump administration officials may have been in legal jeopardy. So the call with Secretary, Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger and so on. I think some of those other efforts actually uh, come closer to the, the sorts of coups that, that I uh, historically study. What we do know is that Trump did not get any overt support uh, for uh, his bid to stay in power uh, from the military or other security forces. So again, given that 96% of all coups involve overt support from the military, that was an important reason why um, Trump's attempt to, to stay in office failed. Uh, he also, President Trump also didn't get the support of key election officials in swing states or from you know, Vice President Mike Pence, of course, to um, not certify the election on January 6th when, when things came to a head. So my quick take is, in part, I think what we saw um, with the culmination on January 6th, perhaps, was in fact a failure to stage a coup and then um, leading to um, these, these violent protests. More troubling though in the long run though is that coup attempts tend to beget more coup attempts and, um, and you can wind up in a place where coups once were sub-rationally unthinkable in a country like the United States who just, you know, no one even thought that it would even be possible. And now, right, coup is a word that has entered political discourse uh, and, and, is, and is commonplace in, in US politics. And so uh, in that way, the United States is, is less uh, exceptional than perhaps it was.